I want to talk to you just a second on the difference between the Holy Spirit and the seven spirits of God. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a person of God who is your comforter who will lead you into all truth. He is with you right now here in the earth, and he will lead you into all truth. The mandate that the Lord has given to the seven spirits of God is to teach and train you about all the things that are in heaven and in the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit is operating in you right now in the earth. The seven spirits are operating in the heavenly realms. And while you have encounters with them, they're not going to probably be in you and with you to show you all of the truths of God. This is something you establish through ascension experience. When your desire becomes to know him in the higher, deeper, wider, broader depths of who he is and all of his characteristics, when your desire is to plumb the depths of every facet of his character, when the mandate that you receive from God is to know him in the multidimensional purposes and aspects of that character, you're going to have encounters with the seven spirits of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is in the earth. The seven spirits are in the heavens. And their purpose is to show you how to manifest the things that you see in heaven on the earth. The Holy Spirit is also on the throne because he is omnipresent and because he is one with the Father and the Son. Therefore, they can operate in different realms at the same time. Because you're created in his image, so can you. And this really lends to the understanding of what it means to bilocate. If we understand how the Trinity operates, let's just say that God is omnipresent. He's in all places at all times. But the manifestation of his presence is not. So just for purposes of creating a picture, let's look at how the Trinity operates. They are three beings in one being, operating with one mind, one purpose, unity of spirit. But they can operate in different realms at the same time. So if you say that the manifestation of God's presence is in heaven, you can say that you have in the heavens the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and one day the father looks at the son and says, son, I created man to love me, to worship me, to fellowship with me, to have intimacy with me. But now we have this sin problem down on the earth. So I'm going to send you down to the earth to deal with the sin problem. So what do you have now? You have the father and the Holy Spirit in the heavens, Jesus down on the earth. He comes down to the earth. He deals with the sin problem. Then he tells his disciples, now I'm going back to the Father, but don't worry. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and he's going to guide you in all truth. So Jesus goes back to the Father. The Holy Spirit comes down to the earth. What do you have now? You have the Father and the Son in the heavens and the Holy Spirit on the earth. They're one being with three different parts, but every part has a different administration, a different purpose. So it is with us. We can be in the spirit in the heavens while our soul and our body are still functioning in the earth. The Holy Spirit is on the throne because he's one with the Father and one with the Son. We also are one with him. Uh, when the word says in John chapter 17, Father, I would that they would be one, even as we are one, me in you, you in me, that they may be made perfect. And the same glory which you gave me, I now give them. Therefore, we can be one, one in him and one with one another. The seven spirits are not on the throne as the Holy Spirit is, but they are before the throne. So the Holy Spirit is on the throne. The seven spirits are before the throne to do what? In order to prepare us to rule and reign with him. We cannot engage the seven spirits of God without the Holy Spirit. He's the one who actually presents you to Jesus and Jesus presents you to the Father as a king. And the seven spirits of God authorize that presentation that Jesus makes of us to the Father so that the Father can present you to the world as 
a glorified son of God. Jesus said, I am firstborn amongst many, many brethren. Just guess who the many brethren of Jesus are. The many brethren of Jesus are sitting in your seat, listening to this teaching right now. The purpose of the seven spirits before the throne are actually to ratify us that we should be seen in the same glory we had with the Father before the earth was even created. We can't do any of this without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The seven spirits are spirits. Jesus fully manifested the full function, operation, and characteristics, all of the traits of the nature of these seven spirits so that he could be made manifest in mortal flesh so that we could see the glory of the Father. The nature of all seven of these spirits are to be manifested in the earth through the nature of the kingdom living inside of you and I. The kingdom can only be established in the earth as it migrates out of us. Everything in the age of the church, everything went from outside to inside. But in the age of the kingdom, it goes from inside to outside. Therefore, we can only be functioning in the level of authority that the Lord would grant us if we first establish the kingdom within. How do you engage the seven spirits of God then? People say, well, how can I engage with these seven spirits myself? It's actually quite simple. The word says, ask and it'll be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened up to you. This is Matthew 7, 7, and it applies to every facet of our spiritual growth. How do you engage the Spirit of God? Just ask. I remember the first time I asked, I cried out to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I need your, your counsel. And I would spend hours and hours praying and begging and pleading for the counsel of God. And one day, the Spirit of counsel just walked right up and hit me on the shoulder there's a place I can go to a classroom in heaven. It's inside of the Father. He downloads books, and he pushed all those books together and just downloaded them into my head. Engage the Father to bring that domain that you see in the heavenly realms into the earth. These beings are fearful. They're fearful, meaning they're to be respected, and you're to respond to them with reverence. And yet they're very, very marvelous. I know that they know everything about the kingdom realm. The spirit of wisdom is totally beautiful. She has this big gold staff and these beautiful regal purple robes, very, very majestic and feminine. One of the most beautiful beings I've ever seen in my entire life. I really want to encourage you, engage the spirit of wisdom. All you have to do is ask and it'll be given. All you have to do is seek and you'll find. All you have to do is knock and the door will be opened up to you. Go after the spirit of wisdom. She was with God from the very beginning. She knows every work that he's ever done throughout all of the creations and engage her purposefully. Set your mind. You've actually been doing it all along. You just don't know what it is you've been doing. Everything in the seven spirits of God reflects some aspect or some characteristic of God Almighty, especially of the Holy Spirit. This is what they are training you for, to create the image of God, the Son of God on the earth. So therefore they must carry the image of the Father because Jesus said, I didn't come to speak of myself, only that which I hear the Father saying, I of my own self can do nothing, only that which I see the Father doing in the heavenly realms. These are created beings with an intentionality and a purpose ordained by God. They're the first layer of the government of the kingdom of heaven. They're the testimony of heaven in the house of God, and they're subject to the bench of three. They are part of the bench of 10, and they will prepare us for rulership. They set the shadow and the image of everything that comes down from the heaven to the earth, they sit before the throne, and their purpose is to prepare us for rulership. Therefore, I want to encourage you, ask, seek, and knock. When you knock, the door will be open. 
Many of you are going to have encounters in the days ahead with the seven spirits of God. Just embrace those encounters and be thankful. I, I really want to encourage you, encourage them. The more you encourage them, the more encounters you're going to have with them. And the more that you yield yourself to the things that they have prepared for you, the more they will invest in you. They're just like us as earthly parents. When we have children that are really obedient, children that are hungry to learn, children that are desirous to follow the things that we set before them, we will invest that much greater level of time in bringing them into the place that has been sovereignly ordained for them and written down in their scrolls from the beginning. Let's pray.